Hello everyone, today I am going to read a wonderful chapter for you all and the name of the story is Trapped. It is from Gulmoha Reader 7th edition class 5. Now let's get started with the chapter that is Trapped by Sir Gun Srivastav. Trapped The bear padded down the village path and stopped to sniff the air. The village lay sleeping in the hot afternoon sun. Nothing moved except the leaves of the neem tree. The bear walked on. He was young and chubby. Blades of glass lay knotted on his soft shining black fur. His small black eyes sparkled with curiosity. When he arrived at an open gate, he peeped in. The gate opened on a fairly wide courtyard. At the other end was an old woman sitting on a cot. A girl sat near the cot, scrubbing a brass plate with ash and sand. The polished plate sparkled in the midday sun. The glare from it hit the bear's eyes. He purred softly. The girl looked up. The dish fell from her hands and she shrieked, Bhalu! What noise was that? The young bear was puzzled. He was frightened. He drew back a step or two. But then there was an outbreak of noise that sent shudders through his bones. This time he was really scared. Dogs! One of them barked in answer to the shriek. Or so it seemed. At once, barking burst out from everywhere, far and near. Suddenly, the young animal could smell danger all around him. He turned hastily away towards the road that led through the fields back into the forest. But it was too late. The road was not safe. It seemed full of humans. Their hunting cries rang in the air amidst the dogs barking. Doors banged shut. Windows snapped shut. Faces appeared over rooftops, walls and trees. Swinging his head from side to side, the bear pushed forward. He ran as fast as he could over open drains and a garbage dump. But the hunters pressed in on him, closer and closer. Through the cloud of dust, he saw them coming towards him. A gang of children with raised sticks and clothes on their heels were the dogs. Get him! The voices echoed through the lanes. Get him! Get him! Get him! The bear did not understand the cries, but the wild barking of the dogs terrified him. He turned and ran blindly into the next lane and the next and then into another and another. He wanted to get away somehow from the dogs and the screams coming from all directions. But his efforts were in vain. Confused with terror, he lost his way. Now he was angry. His nostrils flared. He rushed headlong down a lane that led into a square. The fleeing animal did not know that the square led nowhere. The square was walled in on all four sides. In the middle of it was an old dry well. The bear got to the well in a few leaps and looked around. There was no place to hide. He was trapped. The animal now turned round to face the children and the dogs. The children began to throw stones at him and he was hit, first on his shoulder, then on his back. The dogs dug their teeth into his hind legs. The bear shook himself free and hit them with a paw. They fell back and he swung round. And with one mighty leap, he disappeared into the dark depth of the well. The children bent over the rim and threw stones, bricks and sticks into the well. The bear, angry and terrified, snarled from below in response. This went on for some minutes. Then, all of a sudden, the stones stopped falling and the cries and shouts ceased. The wounded and frightened bear looked up. A single human face bent down from the top. It was the face of a girl. 
The bear did not know that, but he heard the sound of a kind and gentle voice and felt that somehow this was a friend. There was something in her voice that comforted him. He stopped snarling. That's better, the girl said. Poor bear, how tired you must be. Now sit down and wait. I'll get you out of this. She turned round and faced the children. They had moved away from the well when she arrived. Everybody held her in high regard and the children knew that their bear chase would displease her. What's going on here? She asked them. Why are you torturing this animal? He has done you no harm. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Go away and take the dogs with you. Come on, Mira Didi. We didn't mean any harm, she heard someone say. The bear frightened the girl and we wanted to scare him. That's all. It was just a joke. I don't think so, she said, chasing a young bear into a well. Luckily for him, the poor bear hasn't broken his neck. Now, could you help me get him out? Can you get me a ladder, anyone? I can, said a small boy, Lakshman, and ran off. In a few minutes, he was back, very excited, dragging a ladder behind him. I have got one. I have got a ladder, he said. Wonderful, said Meera and smiled at the boy. This will help us rescue the trapped animal. Now, help me get it into the well. Careful, we mustn't frighten the little fellow. Meera looked into the well and began to speak soothingly to the bear. Then slowly and carefully, she and Lakshman lowered the ladder into the well. A growl rumbled in the throat of the little bear. He clawed at the ladder wildly. No, no, said Meera softly. It will not hurt you. It's a ladder, just a ladder. Move back, make room for the ladder. The bear stepped back and sniffed at the ladder curiously. Slowly, he tried the first step, then another and then the third. He climbed the next six steps quickly. When he had almost reached the middle of the well, he stopped and looked up at the girl with trusting eyes. Come up, she said gently. No one is going to hurt you. She stepped back and Lakshman followed her. They moved away from the well and waited. Would the bear come up safely? Meera wondered. Anything could happen before that. The ladder could slide off or it could fall forward or one of its rungs could break or as they watched anxiously, the head of the bear emerged above the rim of the well and then his shoulders. Then he sniffed, climbed onto the rim and leapt to the ground. He looked at Meera. Go on, run home now, she said, smiling at him. The bear got to his legs and bowed. Yes, he did. Lakshman saw him bow. He bowed to Meera and then padded down the lane to the main road. Once he was on the road, he ran through the large green fields back into the forest. And that is the end of the story. This is adopted from Katha Fiction for Children. Thank you children. I hope you liked the story.